Happy New Year to Stow Ford. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. Let us stand. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. This is the Lord's day. This is your house. Father, come and dwell. This is your house a holy house of prayer where the lost and the lonely bring their burdens and their cares this is your house father come come and dwell this is this is your house father come Father, come and dwell. This is, this is your house. Holy house of prayer. A holy house of prayer. Where the Lord, where the Lord stand alone. Bring their burden. Bring their burden. Let us join together now by praying our opening prayer. Lord God Almighty, we praise you for who you are and what you have done. You are the healer. Bring healing in this place. You are our righteousness. Bring transformation in this place. You are the provider. Increase our trust in you. You are the God who is with us. Let us enter your presence. You are the Lord of hosts. Bring victory in our struggles. You are the God of peace. Bring comfort in our chaos. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us join together as we sing our opening song. Down through the years. The Lord's been good to me. Come on, put your hands together and sing out. One more time down through the years, God's been, God's been good to me. Oh, down, down through the years, God's been good to me. Oh, down through the years, God's been good to me. God's really been good to me all of my life. All of my life, yes, sir. God's been good to me. Oh, oh, oh. God's been good to me. All of my life, God's been good to me. Oh, yes, now God really been good to me. All of my life, 
God's been good to me. Oh, God's been good to me. All of my life. Oh, God's been good to me. I tell you that God's really been good to me. Come on, put your hands together. Put your hands together. Through the years, the Lord's been good to me. Oh, now through the years, the Lord's been good. Lord's been good to me. Oh, now through the years, the Lord's been good to me. I tell you that God's really been good to me. Well, He's been good. He's been good. He's been good. He's been good. No matter what comes my way, the Lord is good. Sometimes up, sometimes down. He's been good. 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 Better to me. Thank you. 
joy in 2023. Hallelujah. Don't let nothing take your joy from you. Because the joy of the Lord is your strength. And if you got joy, you can make it. Do I have a witness in the house? Hallelujah. Jesus said on one occasion, it's more blessed to give than to receive. He says, given it shall be given to you a good measure. Press down, shaken together, and running over. For the measure you give will be the measure you receive. For God loves what? Let us stand as we render unto God that which belongs to God. Bless thou the gifts our hands have brought. Bless thou the fruits our heart and plant. Our tears the faith, the will, the thought, the rest. been singing a hallelujah all day. Yes, I've been singing hallelujah, hallelujah all, day. all day. Since God, since God woke me up this morning, I've been giving him the Singing 
Hallelujah. All day. Yes, I've been singing. Hallelujah. All day. Yeah, since God woke me up this morning. I've been giving him the praise. I've been singing. Hallelujah. All When I went to bed last night, I knelt down to say my prayers, and I called on the Lord and asked him to keep me in his care. He woke me up this morning, and I beheld a brand new day. I've been singing hallelujah. Oh, Since God woke me up this morning, I've been giving him the praise, and I've been singing, hallelujah, oh, hallelujah, 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 glory, hallelujah. Hallelujah. What is the highest praise? What is the highest praise? Hallelujah for keeping me. Hallelujah for blessing me. Hallelujah. 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 Since God, since God woke me up this morning, I've been giving him the praise. I've been singing hallelujah all day. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Your grace has never failed me all my days. I put my life in your hands from the moment that I wake up till I lay my head. Oh, I'm going to sing of the goodness of God. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire in my darkest nights. You have loved me like no other. I've known you for a father. I've known you for a friend. Oh, I'm going to sing of the goodness of God. Could 
How many of you can testify to the fact that God has been faithful? Brought you from 22 and now you're standing in 23. The faithfulness of God. And you ought to be glad about it. We ought to be thankful for it. Because if it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, where would we be or what would we do? God is faithful. Will you bow your heads with me? Oh, Heavenly Father, in the strong name of Jesus. We thank you, Father. You are the God who has allowed our years to continue to roll on. And for that, we are grateful. 
and you are the God who supplies all of our needs according to your riches and glory in Christ Jesus. God, we give you praise because you are the best thing that ever happened to us and we're grateful for it. Now, Father, speak a word to us, a word that only you can. Take me away from me now is your time. As I decrease, you increase. Oh, my Father, send your preacher. Another word, another word. Shine on me. Shine on me. Lord, let your light from your lighthouse shine on me. May the words of my mouth, the meditations of my heart be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, my strength, my redeemer. And the people of God said, Amen, Amen, and Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap with praise. Those of you who have your Bibles, I want to invite your attention the second to the second chapter of Philippians and I want to lift up verse number five where it reads let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus I want to tag this text with the topic mind your business. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, how about mine, your business? Amen. That's what we're asking you to do in 2023. Church in Matthew 22 and 37, the word declares, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. When it comes down to this passage of scripture, in most cases, many of God's children have come to love the Lord with their hearts, but have failed to love God with all of their soul and mind. And I believe this to be the case because in the born again process, folk have failed to realize the power and the process of renewing your mind. The mind is such a powerful gift that God has given us, so much so until you have, when you have made up your mind on a matter, you are more than likely going to follow through on that thing. The power of the mind is so strong, my brothers and sisters, until whatever or whoever has your mind has you. We have witnessed this in the area of relationships. Back in the day, we have heard love songs that place emphasis or focus on the mind. Songs like, I gave my heart and soul to you, girl. Did not do it, baby. Did not blow your mind. Uh-huh, y'all ain't been saved all your life. 
this time by the Delphonics. Then not to be outdone was a group called the Shy Line who came with another song that had lyrics with the emphasis of someone controlling your mind. They said, when you took me to the water, I drank it. Man, I drank more than I could hold. When you took my mind and body, you know you want to take my soul. You got me going. Stone out of my mind. Lord, have mercy. That's what Miss Vanetta did to me. <laughs> Messed my mind up. <laughs> Still got my mind. Hallelujah. You heard that, baby? You see? I'm being good this year. So the truth of the matter is that your mind is a valuable tool. And whatever and whoever you allow to control your mind will control you. This is the reason that a man who is called a pimp can get a woman to go out and sell her body because he has manipulated her mind. This is how a drug dealer can get others to sell his product when they know that jail or being killed is a great possibility. But they do it because he has control over their mind. And if you don't understand the power of the mind, then you can easily become a candidate for mind manipulation. So it is vitally important for you to mind your business. You see, God has designed us as tripartite beings, which means that we are made up of three components, body, soul, and spirit. We are really spirit beings that live in a body, and we possess a soul. Our soul is composed of our mind, our will, our imagination, our emotions, and our intellect. The soul is the place where our behavior and values are formed. You see, before we gave our life to Christ or before we were born again, we lived our lives based upon our flesh controlling our soul, which meant that we operated based upon our feelings or our emotions. That is why when you were asked to do something, your response was, I will if I feel like it. But when you gave your life to Christ, your spirit became alive, and now you have your spirit competing with your flesh over who will control your soul. Preach, wife. Because whoever influences your soul will determine your action. This is where your mind is influenced. Most of our lives, we are accustomed to operating by our feelings, but now the spirit is pulling at our soul. The spirit is showing us a new way where we no longer walk by sight, but now we are commanded to walk by faith. Now, what you must understand is that after you are born again, the spirit of the Lord is alive in you. And this is where God communicates with us through our spirit. Because God is a spirit. I know we like to say I look at my hands and my hands look new. I look at my feet and they did too. But that's not really the case. 
you wearing size 14 before being born again, you still wearing 14. Yeah. Amen. Amen. You see, you still are doing those things after you've been born again. You will still do them until you learn how to mind your business, which is meaning until you learn how to renew your mind. Mm -hmm. You see, unless you renew your mind and until your mind changes, you will continue to do the same old thing, even when you said, I'm not going to do it again. You find yourself repeating because you have not mind your business. This is why you can have Christ in your heart and live a defeated life because the Apostle Paul put it this way. He said, there's a war going on on the inside. When I would do evil, when I would do good, evil is present. And the good I know to do, I don't do it. Oh, wretched man that I am, who will save me? Don't think you all of that in a bag of chips. Because if you don't mind your business, you will continue to fall and make the same mistake. Paul tells us, Romans 12 and 2, that we are not to be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our mind. To renew your mind means you have to change the way you think. And if you change how you think, then you will change how you live. Because the Bible tells us as a person thinks, so is that person. We are what we think. And when I wash my mind with the word of God, I begin to operate differently. This is when you can truly say the things I used to do. I don't do no more. The places I used to go, I don't go no more. Because you've lost an appetite for those things because you started to mind your business and God has arrested your heart and so now you're walking in a new way. Say that's when you have a God mindset. Somebody say God mindset. When you have a God mindset, you operate by faith, which is based upon the word of God. You see, throughout the Bible, we have seen persons who achieve victory in their lives because they had a God mindset. You remember Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego facing the fiery furnace? King heated up the furnace seven times harder. But even facing the heat of the fire, these three boys had a God mindset. And instead of giving in to fear, they declare, even if God don't deliver us, we're still going to trust God. You remember David when faced with the giant Goliath. Instead of running scared, David faced the giant. And David declared that if God delivered me from a lion and a bear, then surely, somebody say surely, God will deliver me from you. Church, when you have a God mindset, you have the faith in knowing that God will deliver. 
no matter the circumstance and no matter the situation, uh, you must put your trust in God. When I have a God mindset, I know that there's nothing too hard for God. You must come to understand that your situation doesn't change God, but God can change your situation. Your sickness doesn't change God, but God can change your sickness. Your lack of money doesn't change God, but God can change your lack of money. When you have a God mindset, you truly believe that all things, not some things, but all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord. When you have a God mindset, you can truly mind your business. And this is why Paul admonishes us in the text by declaring, let this mind be in you. That is also in Christ Jesus. The mind is so powerful that even the devil understands the power of your mind. And guess what? The devil is after our minds. I'm going to pause right here and just say a little quick prayer over you. Put your hand on your mind, on your head. Repeat after me, Lord, in the name of Jesus, keep my mind in 2023. In Jesus' name, amen. And so in praying that prayer, we rebuke all amnesia, all dementia, all those things that cause us to stumble and bumble because our mind is not right. Keep our minds. You see, the first point of keeping your mind is this. You must have a mind with the right focus. And that is a mind that acknowledges God. This acknowledgement of God is our way of yielding our mind to God, knowing that God is not a resource, but God is the source. We acknowledge God as being the source that has all that we need. When we acknowledge God, our minds are spared from becoming reprobate, which is a low mind that seeks after inferior and rejects the superior. It is a person with a low, little mind. But a person who acknowledges God is one who holds fast to Proverbs 3 and 5, where it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding in all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. You see, when we acknowledge God, when we have a mind that is focused on God, God will acknowledge our trust in him. And God will give us a plan of action by guiding our ways and ordering our steps. But your mind must be on the right focus. The second thing is that after we've acknowledged God, we must set our mind on the spirit. Which means that we will function with a mind that's fixed on God and the things of God. When we set our minds on the spirit, as prescribed by Romans 8, 5 and 8, where it says, for those who live according to the flesh, set their minds on the things of the flesh. 
But those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. Let me tell you why this works. Because even now, up in here right now, as I'm preaching the word, the enemy is messing with some of y'all's minds. Y'all ain't paying me no attention. Your mind wondering what you're going to do after the benediction and thinking about what you did last night and all these other things. But instead of having your mind focused, On the spirit. The enemy done tricked you. Now you bumbling and stumbling. You see to please God. Our mind must be on God. We begin, we've been conditioned. To think about ourselves and our wants first. But God's way must have priority. Because when we make God first in our life, God promises that he will bless our lives. Matthew 6 and 33, God promises that we don't have to worry about what we're going to eat and what we're going to wear, worry about our needs because he says when we have a God first mindset and seek first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness then all these things will be given to you. When my mind is set on Christ then God gives me peace. Thank you Jesus. When my mind is set on Christ. I no longer take the enemy's bait. I no longer think negative thoughts because the master is now mastering my mind. And so I'm going to pause right here and give some of y'all a chance to reset your mind. And come back in the room and set it on Christ. Before I give you the final point, and the last point is this. You got to believe that God's way is the best way. You see, the apostle Paul says, we must not conform but be transformed by the renewing of our minds. The urgency of having a mind that is renewed is rooted in the concept of agreement. When we renew our minds, we are in agreement with the word of God. Amos 3 and 3 says, how can two walk together except they agree? If we are not in agreement with God and God's word, God will not walk with us because there is no common bond. But when there is agreement between us and God, then God declares that heaven gets busy Amen. on our behalf. Yes, Jesus said, again, I'd say to you, if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything, they shall ask, and it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. Amen. When there is agreement, I'm finished. Around the word of God, our Father make things happen. When I agree that all things work together for good, for those who love the Lord, God will make it happen. When I agree that when a man's ways pleases the Lord, he'll make even his enemies be at peace with him. 
God will make it happen. When I agree on God giving and bring the full tithe into the storehouse so that there'll be meat in my house and prove me now, says the Lord, I'll open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing you won't have room to receive. How many of you know that God will make it happen when I focus on God and set my mind on things above and when I walk in agreement with God's word? Then my mind is set uh, and I can mind uh, my business. Well, how do you mind your business? Uh, I mind my business by loving God with all my heart, with all my soul, and with all my mind. I mind my business by loving my neighbor like I love myself. I mind my business by trusting God no matter what comes my way. I mind my business by giving worship uh, and offering to the Lord uh, and trusting the Lord uh, by giving him unconditional praise. Because when my mind, uh, I said when my mind, uh, when my mind uh, is on God, uh, then God puts uh, his eye on me. Uh, and I can should truly say, I'm blessed. And how many of you know in 2023, you're blessed in the city. You're blessed in the field. You're blessed in your going in and going out. Because can't nobody do me like Jesus. Do I have a witness in here? Can't nobody do me like the Lord. Uh, my mind is set on Jesus. And because I have the right focus, I can mind my business. How about you? Mind your business. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord is blessing me right now oh right now I know that the Lord is blessing me oh right now oh right now don't you know that he woke me up this morning and he started me on my way. I know that the Lord, yes, he is blessing me. Oh, right now, right now, right now. Don't you know that the Lord is blessing me right about now? Don't you know that the Lord is blessing me right now? Oh, right now. Don't you know that he woke me up this morning and he started me on my way? Oh, the Lord. Yes, he is blessing Right now, right now, right now. 
yes, he woke me up early this morning. I was clothed in my right mind. He did not let me, he did not let me sleep too late, but he woke me right on time. And because he woke me up this morning, and he started me, oh, I know the Lord, he is blessing me. Right now, right now, right now. Don't you know that the Lord, the Lord is blessing me? Right about now. Don't you know that the Lord is blessing me? Right now. Don't you know that he woke me up this morning and he started me on my way. I know the Lord. Yes, he is blessing me. Oh, right now. Right now. Right now. on blessing me every day he's blessing me 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 blessing me blessing me Come on, Eddie Stofalk, everybody. Say that. He's blessing me. He's blessing me. He's blessing me. He's blessing me. Blessing me. He's blessing me. Every day. He's blessing me. In every way. He's blessing me. Blessing me. He's blessing me. Blessing me. Keeping my mind. He's blessing me. Soul and body. He's blessing me. Blessing me. Blessing me, blessing me. When I think, blessing me of the goodness of Jesus. He's blessing me, and all the Lord. He's blessing me, done for me. He's blessing me. I don't know about you, but I can't keep it to myself. I got to tell somebody. He's blessing me, blessing me, blessing me. In 2023, he's blessing me. Blessing me. Blessing me. us by way of internet I failed to announce on the robocall last night that 
we're still doing the drive-by communion. You got time to jump in your car, put the bonnet on your head, and get down here and get you some communion to start the new year off right. So I'm giving you a heads up. Go on and get in the car. Ain't nobody going to say nothing about how you look. Come on. But put your teeth in. But, and, and come on. And get God's communion. Perhaps we pray that perhaps there's somebody here today who's not saved. What better way to start this new year off than to be at one with the Lord Jesus Christ and give your life to Christ. You can get saved today if you so desire. Just stand where you are. We'll pray the prayer of salvation with you this day or perhaps you're already saved and you're looking for a church home we here at Edistow Fork would love to have you I personally want to be your pastor stand where you are and we'll take you in on the first day of this new year How many of you know that prayer still works? Bow your heads, let us pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, in the strong name of Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, In this new year of 2023, God, we want to set our minds and focus it on you and on the things of God and trust you in all your ways. We want to walk in your path of righteousness. We pray today, Father, that you would wash our minds with your word and keep our minds from the encroachment of the enemy. Give our memory memory. Strengthen our ability To do that which is pleasing to you. And God, we confess healing over all those who are on our heal list. Thank you, Lord. For we believe by your stripes we are healed in the name of Jesus. We pray for the Coleman family that you will comfort them in their time of bereavement in the name of Jesus. Lord, that you might pour out your blessing on Edisto Ford in this new year that we might go higher and that we will mind our business and keep it on the main thing, which is Christ Jesus. And for that, we say thank you. Thank you that you've already heard our prayers. But not only have you heard them, you've already answered them. And so we give you praise for it right now. In Jesus' name we pray. 
And the people of God said, Amen. 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 Let us join together in praying our confession and pardon. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. And we have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us from joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, Jesus took bread and he broke it. And he said, this is my body which is given for you. And when the supper was over, he took the cup and he blessed it. And he said, this is my blood. Pour out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you should drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable worship. Pour out your spirit on us gathered here, and on these gifts of bread and wine, make them be for us the body and blood of Jesus Christ. By your spirit, make us one with Christ and one with each other until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. All honor and glory are yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Let us join together by praying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen.
church office will be closed on tomorrow in observance of New Year. Also, the celebration of life services for Mr. Henry Coleman is being planned. And as soon as the arrangements are made, we will inform you. Um, Dr. Sally, the family has requested that you bring reflections, so get busy. I ain't even going to look back there at you as the late leader bring reflections. And... <coughs> Let me just say this. Because the family has also requested for Bishop Hayes T. Ganey to bring reflection. And I have agreed to that. Because, let me, let me say this to you. When folk are in grief, their needs are more important than my personal ego. Amen? And so you don't want to put yourself, unless they're doing something that's totally against church protocol, you don't want to um, cause any more grief to the family. And so I know that some of you will be, the whispering will begin, but I want to say it publicly that I have approved and it's my pastoral right to determine who stands in this pulpit. And so I have approved for him to be here. 